We have two of the best cities in the world right now to use as our laboratories for healthy downtown living, Ann Arbor and Detroit. So speaking about Ann Arbor, you can't read these probably, but number one, top 10 college towns, number four, the most creative cities, number 10, greatest main street in America, number one, best college sports town, number six, top art destination, destination, number four, college towns in the USA, number three, recent college grads. So Ann Arbor has got an extraordinary appeal, and that's why it's changing. And that's probably got a number of you sort of bothered and saying it's not like it once was, and it's not appealing, and it's too crowded, and it's too high, and too many new buildings are ugly. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to explain those processes to you and give you a way to take advantage of it and deal with it, because it's either change or it's regression. And we have done such an extraordinary job of creating a quality of life that the students are now staying. And the firms are now moving to Ann Arbor to take advantage of the students that want to stay here. Think of Google, think of Llamasoft, think of Barracuda, 45 software firms in downtown. So I'm going to give you 10 trends that I see happening over the next 10 years. And I think we're going to see a doubling of the people downtown. I think we're going to see doubling of values. We already have in the last eight years. We've got $200 per square foot condos at Liberty Lofts in 2005. I don't know why that garbled a little bit, but it was basically we've I've rezoned Kingsley Lane to Kingsley Lane actually just up the street three times. Four story, nine story, back to four story. Partnering now with Tom Fitzsimmons. 100% sold out last year before we broke ground at over $420 per square foot. So a 2,000 square foot condo for over $800,000. And it's only 20 units. The market is for well over 100 units downtown. One thing that's going to happen, while you might spot the palm tree in the back, I want you to appreciate the multimodal. We might have global warming to some degree, but I don't think it's going to be that. But I really want you to look at what's happening at the sidewalk and the street scene. So to have multimodal options, and I signed up for Uber yesterday, son Doug has taken it. I wanted to get Uber to bring me here today, but I had another downtown appointment, so I, I didn't use that. But Doug, did you say it was $3 or $5 to go from North Main to downtown? I'm not sure, but around there. Yeah, cheap. So uh, bikes, light rail, bus rapid transit, which are the rubber wheels instead of the steel wheels, uh, different lanes, wide sidewalks, walking. So walking is gaining currency among everybody. It's healthy, it's amazingly uh, easy to get around town. Uh, biking is getting a much, much broader audience. Uh, we're talking, as we'll see in a minute, several light rail and bus rapid transit options. Uh, and complete streets, where the streets are like Main Street. You're gonna see a major change to William over the years that's similar to what's happening to Liberty. That same thing could happen to Washington. We're beginning to convert Main Street from a monumental corridor, excuse me, Huron Street, from a monumental corridor into something that's more pedestrian. I remember talking to the architects and contractors with Larry, and he said, uh, this is six months ago, they don't want to hear anything more about, option, about transit options. We've been talking about those too long. Well, folks, it's finally really beginning to get serious about the various transit options that are going to impact Ann Arbor. And you're going to see on the November ballot a chance for you to vote in yes or no, about getting the four counties, Macomb, Wayne, five counties, Macomb, Wayne, Oakland, Livingston, and Washtenaw to all agree on getting around a lot easier, a lot better with lots of options. With Detroit being a hub and spoke, uh, but also a lot more with the heavy rail that we've got right coming through town right now and the railroad track right behind you. So the Ann Arbor to Detroit commuter train is going to be part of that. And I just heard this morning uh, from my good friend in Washington, Chris Leinberger, who said that the transportation bill that was passed two months ago has some windfall options in it for transit 
that they never thought would be passed, but they were. And they're just beginning to appreciate what this is going to do to hasten the speed of mass transit options across the country. So doubling of trains from Chicago to Detroit, the commuter from Ann Arbor to Detroit, and the four county mass transit with uh, uh, light rail or, or uh, um, bus rapid transit. The Ann Arbor Connector, I think you're going to finally, once these other big issues get solved, the Ann Arbor Connector, which is the idea of how to get from North Campus and the old Pfizer Campus uh, down Fuller Road across the river and up along the side of the hospital and connect to the train station, which I think is going to be announced soon. I think the train station will probably be announced for Fuller Road instead of keeping it a depot because that's where the Ann Arbor Connector intercepts it. That Ann Arbor Connector will then come up through the medical campus, come through main campus with a link to downtown, perhaps down Washington, perhaps down William or Liberty, or maybe a loop of both, and uh, then all the way down to the South Campus, the athletic campus in Briarwood. Uh, there is serious attention now and funding behind the idea of the Wally. Our buildings are on North Main. We see how many cars are coming down North Main every day. The people who have to use the car to get in and out of Ann Arbor, 65,000 cars a day, is just crazy. Nobody likes that commute. Whether you're coming in or going out, there have got to be better ways to do it. And there are a lot more people in the suburbs that need to get in or people here working in other areas. So counting on everybody to use the car is going to be the most significant big change in the next five to 10 years. Whether it's Uber, whether it's one of these transit options, uh, the, even the Detroit to Holland and Grand Rapids. The train tracks are all there. The train tracks from Ann Arbor to Alma, Mount Pleasant, Traverse City. The tracks are all there. They're all owned by the state. Right now they're all freight. That's the railroad track that goes over Argo Pond. That goes right behind here. Same track. That track starts in Toledo and goes to Traverse City and up to Petoskey. So three to five years for that to be a Excursion on the weekends or football in five years or longer, it's going to be routine, I think. The Ann Arbor Greenway. Ann Arbor Greenway is this pedestrian trail that's along the railroad tracks, along the Allen Creek. We've been talking about this for 15 years, maybe 20. Maybe 30. <laughs> Forever. And the big anchor sites that need to kick it off are right behind you. 415 West Washington and the 721 North Main Service Yard, both sides of the Mother City. Right now, they've created, they reconstituted the Allen Creek Committee. They're waiting for their first meeting. I think the leadership in City Hall and the fact we don't have a city administrator is taking a lot of time. So we aren't ramping that up as fast as a lot of people would like. But that Allen Creek Greenway will be a 12 foot jogging, biking, strolling uh, route that goes from the athletic campus all the way through downtown, right behind you, right on the other side of the track, and uh, crosses over Huron, crosses over Miller, crosses over Felch, and gets all the way up to the border to border trail at Argo Pond and Argo Dam and Argo Cascades. And it's not just a recreational link, it's a commuter link. It's a way to get to work for everybody living in Water Hill or living up Pontiac Trail or living in the Old West Side or Burns Park. Uh, this is the route of the Wally, which stands for Washtenaw Livingston County. Uh, this roughly is the railroad track that is out here and uh, goes through Leslie Park and goes due north and goes up through Whitmore Lake, goes through Hamburg and goes on up. It does not go directly to Brighton, but there places to park and ride and drop, honey drop, whatever you call it, where your spouse drops you off at a, at, a, at a station to get on the light rail to come down, or heavy rail to come down to town. <clears throat> this is the Ann Arbor Connector route that I talked about. Now, so those are all the transit agendas. I forgot to mention that the, the Wally line the stop, the first stop will be up on Plymouth Road, right near Medical Campus, North Campus. The second stop will be right here, right behind you. If you look at the presentation that was given January 28th, they showed a railroad station right behind you, between you and the railroad tracks on that driveway. So they're already talking about using your land. Okay, so that public review is going to get fully vetted now that you've, the word is out. They do that when they already own the land on the other side of the railroad track. 
because they want the uh, passengers to be able to get off a little closer to downtown, particularly be able to walk up Liberty, walk up Washington Street. And they only need 20, 15 feet wide, 20 feet wide. It would really be just a landing platform that you could walk off and walk to the two streets. Not well, uh, let's talk. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk to you about something else in a minute anyway. <laughs> all right, so placemaking. What is driving all these values is a sense of place. And you look at Bill's Beer Garden as a great example. Isn't Bill's Beer Garden amazing? Yes. It's like Ann Arbor's living room to meet a bunch of friends and family and, and other demographic groups and you just go sit around a fire pit with a glass of wine or a beer and you meet somebody you would never normally meet. It's better than the Mark's Carts. It's better than the farmer's market. It's amazing. And Main Street and Art Fair and uh, everybody wonders about all this flocks and retailers and restaurants opening and some of them closing. Is the market here? Yes, because we are now keeping our grads. They're staying in town, and there's nothing the grads like more than a, a good beer, a good coffee, a good restaurant that's a short walk from their firm, from their software firm. And look at the way Lamasoft took over six floors of the First National Building, and now they've just announced that they're moving over to, where did I just read the Lamasoft is going? McKinley's building. McKinley's building, taking over the Google space because Google is moving out to Plymouth Road next to Leslie Park in Bill Martin's uh, first Martin's uh, uh, Traverwood. So 45 software firms downtown, and some of them are world class. You know, the Google, the Barracuda, the Llamasoft, the dual security just up the street, and it's driving up the rents. We're down to three percent vacancy. Uh, we're going to have a new office building here pretty soon. So great place creates great jobs. I think in economic cycles. And economic cycles are three to five years, sometimes they're nine years, sometimes they're one year. We're at the beginning of an economic cycle in some people's minds. We're five years into the economic cycle in some other people's minds. My own personal view is this economic cycle in Ann Arbor is not a bubble about to burst. And the two reasons are, a typical economic cycle is driven by consumer behavior and the housing industry. And those two industries are just sort of getting back to normal. The consumer is finally sees a little wage growth. The consumer's confidence is the highest it's been in years. The housing industry is kicking off better across the country than it's been since 2006. And some places in the country, it's not so hot. But in Michigan, it's pretty good. In Ann Arbor, it is absolutely hot as they get. And Detroit, it's now getting amazingly good because you still got 70,000 homes in foreclosure and you got people buying a home for three, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars that require ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to fix up and they can rent them for a thousand dollars a month because there's no housing for all the new people moving to town. So what you're going to see in Ann Arbor are more pressures for ADUs, which are accessory dwelling units. The granny flat idea that was talked about eight years ago when the mayor didn't even let it get to council because he said this is dead on arrival. But we need to think about it. Uh, this is an example of just putting a granny flat over a garage. A lot of people are terrified that it's going to be the drunk students are all moving into their neighborhoods. <laughs> there are other people that need this housing. It could be a true granny. Uh, grocery downtown is going to happen, TOD, transit-oriented development is going to happen, mixed-use development is going to happen. Uh, all the parking lots in downtown are going to get redeveloped. The fact that the city has finally decided to proceed with this $10 million sale to the core spaces out of Chicago for the library lot is probably going to happen. They'll get their eight votes. The fact that the city said we're going to build underground parking now instead of surface or a deck makes all kinds of sense. It'll prove to be a good deal in the long run. One of the reasons that there's a $10 million sale is because they prepped all the footings and foundations into that parking deck. So you're going to see that happen to Klein's lot. You're going to see it happen to the Paleo lot on a small scale. You're going to see something happen to 415 West Washington and 721 North Main. <coughs> this is probably the biggest reason that Ann Arbor is changing. How many of you went to U of M? 
We have the best leadership we've ever had. I mean, the idea when we were all there, when I was all there 30 years ago, was you had the profs all had to publish or perish. Now they got to patent or perish. They got to do something more relevant to society. They have to make something that's good to help out mankind, and it can't be some ivory tower esoteric uh, a, a PhD book. And the tech transfer is a good example of that. How many of you have been over into the tech arb on Liberty Street? Isn't that amazing? Just amazing. You go down below Kinko's, below that old dumpy uh, Tally Hall parking deck building where they had the shoe shine box and all the fashion downstairs. It was just such an abomination and a failure. That's now a tech arb. So the best time of day to go there is what time? 2 a.m. <laughs> 2 a.m. The students have done their other work. They go there and they meet with each other and they play with great ideas coming out of their faculty uh, or classroom experiences and they're creating all kinds of software apps. And a lot of them have spawned into real deals. Duo security is an example. So the tech transfer is huge. The next big huge thing about to happen is MOOC. What's MOOC stand for? Anybody know what MOOC stands for? Or LOOC? L-O-O-C? MOOC is Massive Open Online Classroom. LOOC is Local Open Online Classroom. So in my classes, two years ago, I flipped my classroom. I don't lecture anymore. I've got a textbook that's online for 10 bucks. I have 15 chapters. I assign the book to the students before they ever come to the first class. I give them an exam on the textbook one week, two weeks into the class, and I give them 15 video lectures. And they have to, they're all online. See tools are Canvas now. And you all have to read the book, listen to my lectures, see my PowerPoints, and be tested on that textbook. So the entire classroom is about students teaching students, case studies, uh, presentations by the students, discussion groups. I've got a couple of students just out of class that are now my TAs who work with them closely out of class. I still have my office hours over at Pizza House after every class, but uh, I didn't take that away. And uh, what all the professors are now beginning to do is flip their classroom, take everything that's lecture, put it online, give it to them free, get it out of the class, turn the class in discussion. Because this is what makes the University of Michigan campus experience, or any great campus, experience worthwhile. But routine lectures are not for the classroom. In fact, I find that my lectures are the best ever when I was in a studio and I really focused on it. And I, I redid them after the first year because the first generation were just sort of horrible. But they got a lot better, the students told me so. So they got a lot better and they're real short. Each lecture by me is maybe 10 minutes for chapter. So it's real pointed, backs it up with a PowerPoint. And now what we're doing, and this is a university-wide agenda, is lifelong learning with the, faculty, with the alumni. So any alumni from U of L is now getting access to all these lectures online. And all the things like exec ed over at the business school, we're now offering the alumni for free. Somebody else might pay $60,000 to go. Alumni, get in free. We got a seat for you. So lifelong learning and pushing everything online and opening up the classroom experience to cross-fertilization. MBAs teaching Master of Architecture. Law students teaching LSNA students. It's a wonderful way to learn. Doing term projects. So, and I also love the fact that we've got, we've got 10 dean searches going on right now. 10 for various schools out of 40, 40 uh, uh, programs. So getting a new dean for every five or 10 years to come in and flip the faculty is one of Michigan's strengths. I mean, I, I watch undergrads for decades. I, I can't tell, I don't think, this, you can't beat a U of M education as an undergrad. I mean, it's just amazing the classroom experience these kids have. Uh, and then the fact we're raising $3 billion. And it's not for bricks and mortar this time. It's for faculty and students and programs. And that's going to create more 
Coffee shops, bars, restaurants, housing demands. Ann Arbor's got to go up. Ann Arbor's got to get more dense. <clears throat> that is a picture of the tech arm over on Liberty. That's probably at uh, 11 o'clock, a little early. <coughs> you can walk down there, it's a great big glass wall. So you go into Kinko's, turn right, go down the stairs, walk down the hall and go see it. Go see it, take your grandkid and go see it. So then we got this whole thing in Detroit. I think the idea of opening up Detroit to 100,000 immigrants is a fantastic idea. And we certainly got the room. And as I look at the Detroit region, you had 2 million people in Detroit, you had 3 million people in the Detroit metropolitan area, including all the suburbs in Oakland County. We now have 4.2 million people in the five counties, and I'll bet there's four or 500,000 that are thinking about moving back to Detroit. Thinking about. Some people have a hang up with the schools, some people have a hang up with the memories, but the young people that get out of Southfield, Livonia, and Farmington Hills are not moving back to Southfield, Farmington Hills, unless maybe they've got kids and they want a house and they want a, a yard. But if they're younger, they're looking at Detroit as that's where I'm going. Thousand Nights. Anybody ever heard the term Thousand Nights? Thousand Nights means when you get out of school, you want to spend a thousand nights working hard, playing hard. You don't want to think about having a family. And those thousand nights are what's driving the placemaking in the street scene and the retail mix and the housing or the uh, office startup and the new apps turning into real opportunities. So the kids getting out of school want a great place for a thousand nights. How does it work? Great. How much to get where? Last time I took it, it was two dollars. To go from where to where? South side, downtown for two bucks. This shared economy is amazing. And getting around without a car, part of your frustration if you're mad at Ann Arbor is because maybe you just are still dependent on your car. And you're wedded to it. And we're now coming up with better bike lanes, better walking options, better senior options, or just uh, parking, uh, uh, bus options, Uber, Lyft, what is Uber? Uber and Lyft. Doug, you want to explain it? Well, you were talking about the shared. <clears throat> it's basically like a taxi service without the uh, historical licensing uh, that went into that. So, who would be a taxi driver? I can sign up for Uber. I need a car that is insured, less than five years old. Um, I'm not sure what the other uh, restrictions are, but basically, I can become a driver. Uh, I get a text message from you where you are. Uh, you've already entered your credit card data into the app on your phone. I come find you, I pick you up, I know where you're going. It's a pleasant ride. You can plug in your phone, listen to music in, in my car while we're driving there. Um, and uh, no cash is exchanged, so I'll get a check from Uber at the end of the month and you get to where you want to go. And the difference between Uber and Lyft? There's not. Really no difference between Uber and Lyft. Both same thing. So you get students who are looking for part-time money, and they'll just say, I'm going to do Uber from 9 o'clock at night till midnight, or do it from 11 till 2 a.m. It's a great way to not drink and drive for the riders. I mean, they go downtown, they just get an Uber car. And another part of the shared economy is this Airbnb. Has anybody used Airbnb? What do you think of it, Deb? It's pretty fabulous. Did you use your house, or did you go stay in an Airbnb? Where'd you go? Um, we went to Charlotte, we've been to Savannah, we've been to Charleston. Not only do you get um, an idea of, of, of the house or, or where you're staying, New York, we stayed in New York as well, um, but also then the, the people who own it, they do um, a, a survey of us so that if we want to rent future um, facilities, other people who rent know what kind of renters we are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they, they were really nice. It was convenient. It was um, cheap. Cheap. It was cheap. It was great. Perfect. Uh, the last six trips my wife and I have taken, we've stayed in Airbnb the entire time. I'll never stay in a hotel again in my life. It was so much fun. It was so much more local. You really get a feel for the neighborhood. You got great advice. 
So for you to share your house or part of your house with Airbnb is another way for the shared economy. Five minutes? Okay. So housing downtown is beginning to sell for $400 a foot. Um, I've talked about Airbnb. Your house that you live in, if it's in good condition, if it's walkable to downtown, inside the city limits, it's probably approaching $250 per square foot. Not including the basement or the garage or the attic, but living space. $250 a foot it seems to be sort of the market for single family homes. The market for condos downtown is anywhere from $350 to, as I said, our brand new Kingsley. They're all custom units, so they're around $420 a foot. If they were standard, they'd be a little under $400 a foot. I know you've for years thought about this, and I'm glad Dan's here because I know he's taken a leadership role in this. I think Kiwanis is sitting on a property that probably is, in most people's minds, not architectural quality to put on the National Register. Uh, there probably is a market for going up five or six stories on the site, and this building could be worth uh, something in excess of two to three million dollars. Just the land, with what's going on downtown. For you to take all your functions, uh, the resale shop, and go to the city, make them an offer to take the back corner, which is the High Bay area. Uh, it's the back corner of 415 West Washington. They'll give it to you, as is. I would spent an hour yesterday going through Mark Ruder's analysis and Bill Kinley's analysis of that building. There's a lot of salvage value to that. And you could have a lot more space than you have now to put the resale shop and seed the redevelopment of that whole area with some combination of residential retail and office in the front, uh, some a park, uh, get the Allen Creek Greenway going, uh, because that's an anchor site that I think is going to be a catalyst for the whole Allen Creek Greenway to happen. So you could get a lot of great goodwill by seeding a portion and owning it as a condominium. So you take your two to three million from this, you spend half a million bucks fixing up uh, that back corner for your needs, you rebuild the first floor as neighborhood retail, you rebuild the second floor for what you have here right now, and you put four floors of condos on top for your members. <laughs> and all of you that are living in houses out in town, sell your big house to one of your junior Kiwanis members that's got a family at this 250 a foot. You sell your house for a half a million, you buy your condo for three to four hundred thousand, you got some money left in your pocket. The Kiwanis takes the two to three million dollars for the sale of this, puts some money into the 415 West Washington, uh, takes back the first and second floor to the degree that they think is, makes sense, and you've got a million dollars plus to use for whatever you want. And maybe the first buyers from Kiwanis that want to buy the units get a discount for doing the pre-sale, because you've got to pre-sell the 40 condos on top, you got to get 20 sales up front. So if 20 of you want to own a condo down here and improve your lifestyle, number one, you're going to walk, start walking everywhere. You're not going to be so auto dependent. Number two, your grandkids are going to think you're real cool. <laughs> number three, you're going to live longer because of the lifestyle. And number four, you're going to be part of, I think, just everybody in Kiwanis International say, you did what? But I think the numbers, and uh, I was showing those to Doug, there's my back of the envelope, my little tape from the computer. Dan, I'd love to show this to you, see what you think. <laughs> so with that, it's 1.15, any questions? <laughs> yes, sir, Bob? You mentioned downtown grocery stores. What, what's in, uh, what are you thinking about here? I, I think the, um, live, the former YMCA site that's owned by Denny Dahlman, uh, because it's right at the transit hub, would be a great place for a grocery, 20,000 square feet, maybe one level down. Maybe part of it's a grade level and part of it's a lower level. That to me is the center of town, the best location for it. Good. Yes. Is Ann Arbor overbuilt? No. Ann Arbor's not overbuilt. Ann Arbor's underbuilt. We have 2% we have vacancy, 3% vacancy in the rentals. We have 2 to 3% uh, um, uh, excess supply of houses for sale. There are thousands more people wanting to live and work here than we have capacity. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll come see you.